Hey guys, this is all about making your own leaders for nighttime jigging for bluefin tuna. Slowly acquired, but here we are. This is a finished product. Just want to show you what it looks like. When I crimped it, three crimps away from the edge so that it could kind of flare at the tip, the edge of it. So it's not crimping on the line itself. At the end of it, you're kind of heating up the end of the mono tip to mushroom the tip. And that's what that would look like. This is that short chafing tube and then a swivel at the top end. At the bottom of it, I have the infinity ring. And what I'll do is I'll put the swivel on this. There's a couple of variations of items. We have Jinkai items, line for 300 pound and I have line for 200 pound. I got these from Tackle Direct. There was a, a really nice coupon from it. So that includes the sleeves and the crimping tool. I have these catch-all and their chafing tubes. And there's another one that's kind of um, load designed, but this is really all you would need. In this sleeve, there's only 25 pieces, but I'm able to get three out of each single tube. So I didn't cut perfect sizes, but these were exactly what I came about when I cut them. You can tell they're, they're not exactly perfect, but they'll do exactly what you need to do. And they fit perfectly over their, their specified diameter monoliter. So 1.4 would be your 200 pound and 1.6 would be your 300 pound. That's the diameter that I got them for. These hardwares I got from swivels, infinity rings, and a split ring are all from China. So the tools we're gonna need, this is the most expensive piece that I had to buy here. Here's your cost, $52 a lighter to flare your mushroom ends for the mono and something to cut it with. So I'm gonna unravel four foot of line first. So this is four foot of a marker. This is my custom wrapped side cutter and just trimming it right here. This one's 200 pounds. So I have two sizes. This is G and this is F. It says 300 pound I wrote here and then 175 to 200 that this was used for. So I need two of these, one for either end. So we'll stuff this in first. Now the chafing tube. And the easiest way to, to get it in is just to kind of like twirl it back and forth. Now we got it in. And let's just say we're doing the top end. So I'm gonna put a swivel on this. And this swivel is from this company on from Asia. It's called 9KM. It was rated for 352 pounds. Even if it wasn't 352 pounds, 200 pound is plenty. It's a nice beefy size and it has this nickel coating which is peeling off. It was coated so that it could help alleviate from any rust. So we'll feed it through the end here and we'll go right back in. And once you're in it, you do want to give it a little bit of extra room because what we're going to do is we're going to heat this tip. So next thing we need is a lighter. And we're not putting the fire directly onto it. We just want to inch ourselves towards this where you see it at a melting point. So let's put a clean slate so you see a background. And if you see that there, it gave a nice flared tip. I'm just cooling it down as fast as I could. So what this does is it creates kind of like a, a mushroom head on it. So if for any reason that even upon the crimping that we do on this, and if it ever gives, you have sort of like a, a backup solution here. One person that I read that did this, when they set up their, their leader, touching for its heat. When, when they set this up, what they did was they forgot to crimp their line. I don't remember the size he, uh, he said he landed, uh, but he did land his fish and realized that even though he landed his fish, he noticed that it wasn't crimped. So this alone saved him on that, on that species. So here we go. Um, it's on the long ways on, and what we're doing is we're going to try to get it away or not directly onto the edge. So if you notice, I'm leaving maybe one and a half to two millimeters at the end of this that's exposed. You don't want it all the way uh, to the edge and you're crimping the edge because that creates kind of like a sharp edge on, on this aluminum sleeve. So 
So if you look at it closer now, now the edge of this, it's kind of flared outwards. I'll do the same thing on the other side. And then I, I would say that this is already good enough, um, but because I have it and, and I'm able to, I'm going to do the center as well. And same thing, I'm gonna line it and evenly space it as best as I can. And there you have it, a nice solid crimped connection. So that's one end right here. And we're gonna do the same thing for the other end. So this is 200 pound. So this was a 1.6, which is when you put this one in, it, it goes in really smooth and really easily. I'm gonna go for the 1.4. And same thing with your side cutter. Snips it off easily. And at the bottom of this, you can put directly a swivel on it. But since we have it, we have these infinity rings. I'm gonna use this. So I have two of them. I bought two sizes. I, I wasn't sure what either would look like. So I bought these two. Surprisingly, the medium has a stronger um, weight rating. So 772 pound on the medium, 661 on the large. And I feel like if I have a lot more hooks, uh, I could throw this on, on and it gives me a little bit more freedom. And this would just be a lot more cleaner, hardware wise, less tackle, less hardware on the bottom of the jig. So it'll look really clean with this. So at 20 pieces, I, I got a, a couple bags of each, but they came out to about 14 and 15 cents uh, for each of these. So I'm just gonna bring out a medium. And what I'm doing it is I'm using the smaller eyelet Now back in, and the same process that we did, which was flare and mushroom this head, or the end. Hmm. <laughs> pull it all the way down, pull the chafing tube all the way to the end of it, and then pull this up. There we have it. Same process, we're gonna leave about a millimeter to two on either ends exposed. And then one more down the center, evenly spaced. And that's the finished version. So there we have it. This is now a 200 pound liter. Paid 750, each of these came out to 10 cents when I split them up into three. So there's 75 pieces that I would have instead of 25. And then same thing, there's 50 pieces each. Uh, I paid 720 for these, each of these, and they come out to about 15 cents each. This came out to 52. This is everything that I bought from this one specific company, 9KM. There is split rings on my left side. They are 260 pound rated. They come out to about 13 cents per piece. There is infinity rings and those are 660 pound rated and they are about 15 cents each. And then to my right is the swivels. These are 350 pound rated and they come out to about 60 cents each. This is the size of the split ring right here. 9km split ring 260 pound owner hyperwire number 10 220 pounds 9km on the left owner on the right this is the size of the infinity ring 200 on the left which is 1760 and 300 on the right which is about 24 bucks 
I only need approximately four foot lengths and that comes out to 24 cents total on the 232 cents for the 300 pound cutters. You could use anything. I'm just using the one that I made. Still haven't finished the video, but this is what it looks like. Really nice, eight bucks, Harbor Freight. Custom wrapped it myself, ugly as heck, but it'll get the job done for what I needed to do. <laughs> Just a little bit of comparison from the ball bearing that I got from the 9KM. You can see it here, a little bit of the, the coating that's peeling off. This is an AFW. This is 260 pound rated. This is a S Pro, which is similar to the size of my owner that we did a, a comparison on before. 550 and then 410 rated. This is what 260 looks like. This is what 510, 550 looks like. And then right here is our 352. So even though it's a little bit more than the AFW, this is just beefier components all around, thicker gauge on the actual ring itself. So one note, um, this is mass production from China. And of course we always feel like, is it trustworthy? But I wanna note two things that I have here. This is AFW and this is owner. And if you look at the back of them, made in China for the AFW and made in China for the owner as well. This S Pro, which I was very surprised on, is made in Japan. So pretty good quality stuff right here. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and you were able to learn something from this. I, I greatly appreciate that you guys have been following along and everything that I'm learning, I'm sharing with you guys. I'm being educated along the process as well. I wanna give a big thanks to you guys by giving a handful of these out. Leave a comment below and like this video, I'm gonna pick out a good handful of guys and I'm gonna send this out. We'll work out the shipping if you're out of the country. Thanks so much. Hope you guys enjoyed this.